Hi, this is Eric at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. And this is the whole farm, tropical fruit farm tour. All 10 acres, my monthly farm update. I'm out here in the Zebus with the Zebus. It's my little cow, Pepsi, Bogle Farms, Uma, and her little baby, uh, Peanut. <clears throat> Bo uh, FBF Benya. She's a fancy little paint. She's so cute. She's three weeks old. This is her big sister who's two months old next week. And she's smaller than uh, Peanut. This is uh, Tiny Bubbles. That's her mother. Uh, J.W. McMahon Luna, I think. Anyway, she's a Rick Bogle uh, line of, from a Rick Bogle line of cows out of a can't remember her mother's name but she's a nice cow she's our biggest cow she's about 37 inches uh, and this is a uh, uh, Pepsi Bogle Farms Uma is uh, 32 33 inches she's a tricolored red black and white and her baby is probably going to be speckled uh, and uh, little uh, tiny bubbles is so cute. They're just so precious. They're so amazing. The miniature zebu. I'm just we're just very fortunate to have them. Anyway, we rotationally graze them, so it's been very dry here, so our pastures are a little lacking, and uh, I don't put them in with the bowl because I don't want them bred right away. Because I read where if you wait to breed them. For a couple of heat cycles, they're more likely to have females, which I did last year, and we had two girls. This is our other cow, uh, Bogle Farms Carnation. She's very beautiful. She turns white in the summer, which she's starting to do now. Uh, she was our problem cow, but she's since fixed herself. And this is our little bull, uh, Bogle Farms Midnight, out of a cow of Rick Bogle's called Bogle Farms Amber. and. He's a, out of the same cow as Mondo Perkins, tiny little cow, Cappy, a very nice paint. He's also a sister to uh, Rick Bogle's cow, Bunny, and uh, a tiny little cow. And he's only 32 inches tall, and he throws tiny little babies, and he's uh, four years old. He's quite the handsome guy. He's very well built, for especially his rear end for a miniature Zebu is just... He's just put together super nice. He's super long. His mother is super long. I wanted uh, a calf out of uh, Amber because I thought she was the most beautiful cow I've ever seen as far as body-wise, uh, Zebus, And uh, he certainly has her body, that's for sure. He's just a nice, temperamented, good cow, or bull, anyway. Uh, so they're separate. She's doing I think October. Hopefully she'll have a female too because she definitely did not breed on the first heat cycles. She took a while to uh, to breed. She had issues. She was very skinny. I think she got, she lost her baby last year and I think her hormones were a little bit off. Uh, so she just, she just didn't, didn't take, but she looks very good now and she seems fine. And we have one more in here. This is Pepsi's calf from last year, who is uh, FBF Cooper. I call him, we call him Romy, little Romeo. And he's so cute and sweet. And he wants to get out there because one of the cows is in heat. And I'm not gonna walk you today, Romy, sorry, but he's gonna be probably mature at about 30, 31 inches, I would guess. He's a tiny little guy. Uh, he's uh, gonna have speckles, not a lot, but he is gonna have speckles. We're gonna use him to breed to Carnation and Luna because I loved his Pepsi's head and uh, more likely to have tiny, tiny little babies since both his mother and father are tiny. Anyway, so here's the fruit trees. This is a sugar low or sweet tart mango that's on its fourth bloom and finally set a lot of fruit, so that's a good thing. And this is a fruit punch mango that's uh, on its fourth bloom, started blooming in early November, and finally has set a ton of fruit. And as you can see, the powdery mildew has not affected our fruit set. So 
You can still see some powdery mildew on here. I've shown these trees. So here's our lychees on this side that I've given lots of compost to and they are covered with fruit. And um, definitely I need to give more com daily compost. Our daily compost is when we clean out the barn <clears throat> every day because we lock our cows in at night so they don't get killed by cows and, and or not cow, killed by dogs and coy or coyotes, knock on wood. Um, and uh, so we clean it out in the morning. We use coastal Bermuda hay for them to sleep on. They eat some of it and uh, then we clean it out and I apply it like that. Some people think that it could have been mulch, but it's not mulch. We are not trying to mulch, use it as mulch. It is a probiotic and a prebiotic for the soil microbes that live in the living mulch. We work on the living mulch. So the living orchard floor is our mulch, not, we don't use mulch. We don't mulch out plants. The plants is where the microbes live. So look at all the fruit on these lychees. It's gonna be a good year. So this is a Venus mango and this tree also was blooming in early uh, November. It seems odd that it's been that long and it's finally set, this is its fourth bloom, finally set so much fruit. I mean, this tree is covered in fruit. It's still blooming. Uh, it's just starting to bloom, but uh, you can see some of the old panicles that never set fruit here, but there is so much fruit on this tree. And Venus is definitely a very good mango. Uh, and it had powdery mildew, which does not affect fruit set. Uh, all these issues people have with fungal issues is due to you've killed the uh, the uh, biology that could uh, counter the fungal pathogen. So uh, due to your antibiotics that uh, are overused in agriculture today, which are known to cause uh, a cognitive decline like copper and even sulfur has been shown to uh, show up in uh, children's blood that have uh, Alzheimer's, uh, so, or not Alzheimer's, sorry. Uh, here I am trying to be a metal, medical uh, knowledge. Uh, autism, so this is a coconut cream that's finally setting fruit. This is, I'm not sure who this is, but it is definitely uh, got fruit all over it, and it's going to be a good uh, fruit year. Uh, this tree had not uh, produced fruit, so we have a lot of uh, big jackfruits that are uh, seed grown. This is a seed grown tree. Looks like it's grafted, but that was because it froze back when it was 31 degrees and uh, that's why it has that node there. But look at all the fruit on this tree, even with no water. We dry farm everything. We rely on the microbes that live in the living orchard floor. There's a little cashew seedling. Uh, this is a super julie tree that's covered in fruit, finally. <clears throat> it's going to be an excellent mango year. It's just going to be very late. Normally we're starting to get mangoes to eat right now, but uh, this year that's not the case. This is a buttercream tree that's got fruit on it. Uh, of course the fruit along here gets hit because I walk through here all the time and people hit it, but the buttercream, buttercream is also one of my favorite uh, fruit trees. Uh, there's a Spanish lime, there, you know, the genip. There's a peach cobbler that's covered in fruit. Uh, there's a, a pineapple pleasure that has fruit all over it. Here's a, a uh, sugarloaf mango tree that is covered in fruit, covered in fruit. I was thinking sugarloaf wasn't that good of a producer, but this year it's an exception and it's done something odd started flowering off the trunk of the tree so this is not a branch that it's flowering off of or you know a tip of a branch this is down the stem of the tree and it's actually flowering right on the trunk and it's setting fruit off the off the trunk so that's something odd this is a venus mango you can see it's totally covered in fruit 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 fruit, fruit. Powdery mildew is a mismanagement issue, obviously. <clears throat> uh, that's why I don't look for other typical growers in Florida in the past, historical growers on how to grow mango trees because nobody had information on how to grow uh, organically. And I noticed all these mango trees uh, around my house when I first moved here. 
uh, that never got watered and had tons of fruit that never had any issues uh, that nobody ever did anything to. So I was like, what's going on here? So I took some soil science classes and a lot of biological, quantum biological classes and, and looked at stuff and uh, pieced together with the help of biodynamic uh, farming and regenerative farming methods, modalities, Indian zero budget natural farming, and uh, got the miniature zebu. And uh, when we have lots and lots and lots of mangoes. It's just a really good year this year, as I thought it would be. And then I was thinking, maybe we're not gonna have that good of mangoes. Malika, Malika's a good mango. This is Namdak Mai, is a good mango. Uh, this Namdak Mai doesn't, didn't really give us a lot of bloom, but it does have some. And this Namdak Mai tree has produced three distinct crops for us. I had a big rack of bananas here, but some creature has been terrorizing them. Uh, but as long as they go for one and not all of them, I'm okay with that. Uh, these are mulberries that the, the bird's been getting all of them. And this mulberry is so good, and I haven't gotten any one fruit off this. Uh, oh, so irritating. These are our Rulinia trees that do not like the drought, but they've never been watered and I'm not about to water them. It's the world's best mulberry. There's a, a uh, Cebu Blue uh, Aeroid. Here's a, a, a peach tree that bloomed for the first time. Seed grown peach tree. Uh, no uh, so these are our, our, our driveway. It has a row of sugar apples and mangoes on the left and ginger and then achachiro at every sugar apple. Both sides the same way, so I'm not gonna even go down there. Uh, the mangoes along there. Uh, because of the neighbor spraying glyphosate along the fence line there have not really been the best producing mangoes since then. Uh, but uh, there's some mangoes on there. This is a big Ingus spectabilis tree. There's a citron citrus there's a littler uh inga spectabilis tree here's a a fruiting um a black sapote kind of want to make this video uh, not super long so i'm going to try to move quickly here's a, a, a sapodilla tree here's an inga fuilii tree here's our fruiting uh achachiro tree and it has a lot of fruit on it and lots and lots of fruit everywhere um, that's good. So it's going to be a good Achachiro tree. And then we have lots of star apples, Oscar's Giant Purple, DPI Gold, Oscar's Giant Purple, Juicy Pearl, um, star apples. And hopefully we're getting seeds of Alva soon. So we'll have, have all three of the best star apples that you can get. We also have Jocko Beach green star apple. So here's a... a uh, Canistel, this is a grafted uh, egg fruit tree uh, called Delightful, and it's a really good fruit, and it's flowering like crazy. Even during the drought, it's got flowers all over it. That's the, the, so this is a Garcinia macrophylla uh, right here. Uh, one of the next uh, Garcinias that should be uh, fruiting for us. This is a Quimuck seed grown tree that uh, had some fungal issues. There's that Jocko Beach, so uh, it's outgrowing the fungal issues, thank God. The, the sooty mold, which of course is an insect caused fungal issue, but uh, the, still the tree does provide an immune response to that to get rid of the <clears throat> uh insect pathogen the insect herbivore rather there's a, a seed grown uh Kwimuk tree here's a achachiro tree we have about 500 achachiro trees that's why we started this farm a uh, very high-end crop here's a a, a, a Monstera deliciosa thai constellation that's finally sending out a really good variegated leaf the rabbits were eating all the leaves on this, but it's attached to the tree, so finally it's going to be above where they can get it. Uh, lots of different citrus through here, Rangapuri limes, uh, Garcinia dulcis. They don't mind, the Garcinias do not mind drought. There's a Garcinia dulcis growing in full sun. There's a Garcinia acuminata. 
growing in full sun. There's a, a pumelo right here that flowered for the first time. All our citrus is seed grown. Uh, and then we have little seed grown uh, egg fruits. Like right there is a seed grown egg fruit, uh, Rasa Bote. Starfruit, starfruit, uh, pumelo, Inga spectabilis, Inga spectabilis. <clears throat> And then we have, it's looking even good here without, since I've been doing the landscaping, trying to get everything so that it, it's just not all solid weeds because it just looks better, it's prettier. Um, so this is a, a, a June plum or a hog plum, hog plum. Mom bin, or I can't think of it. What is it? It's a, it's a <laughs> it's a hog plum and a June plum. It's a uh, one's dulcis and one's uh, mom bin. This is a wax jambu. I'll think of it in a minute. There's a spinach. This is uh, a, a uh, moringa, of course. Here's another uh, a wax jambu. Spondius. Mombin and Spondius Joltis is hog plum and June plum in that order. Yeah. Mombin, M O M B I N. <clears throat> Here's a, a uh, that was a M4. This is a, a Venus. This is a, this, the creatures have been getting all my sapodilla. So this had more fruit on it, and, but they've been coming up here ripping the fruit off as it's been getting ripe. And, uh, breaking the branches while they're at it. Uh, so it's kind of a problem. Here's a, a ingevira tree, a, you know, ice cream bean. This is a erasapote covered in flowers. Here's a, a Venus mango. Here's the remnants of my vegetable garden. Vegetable garden was a big success. We got lots of good squash out of it this year. Uh, here's a jackfruit, a grafted jackfruit that uh, has produced fruit every every month so every month so far this year. This one looks ready. I'm gonna pick it today. Yay! Um, here's a the rabbit people. Um, here's a, uh, a a sweet tart mango, and this tree is loaded in fruit. Loaded in fruit, all the way up. It's a fairly big tree. It's one of our oldest, older trees on the property. Um, there's a bunch of moringa in there. That's what's left of my vegetable garden, our dry farm vegetables. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay, get moving. 18 minutes. I want to make this video under an hour. So here's a, a Ross Sapote. Here's a Ross Sapote that got hit by uh, a... Uh, freeze two years ago. It froze half of it back. It always produced lots of fruit, but it's finally snapping back. Here's the Rastapote. Here's another uh, sugarloaf mango that has little tiny fruits just started on it. Um, here's that Venus, the back side of it. Here's a, I showed this uh, fruit punch tree that was loaded in um, uh, powdery mildew. And I wanted to show you that it's wood set fruit, which it has, and it's holding the fruit. So. I just wanted to show that this was like one of the worst case cases I've ever seen of powdery mildew, and yet it still has plenty of fruit, and it will have plenty of fruit. So it's not anything to worry about here when you when you farm biologically and you uh, build up the immune system of the plant, which is the soil microbes, the is the gut of the plant. So you can't kill the uh, soil microbes uh, with antibiotics and expect the uh, soil microbes to uh, provide the plant the ability to uh, trigger an immune response. It's the, it's the brains of the whole system, so are all the microbes. Look at all the fruit on this Quimuk. This is a grafted tree and it has lots of fruit on it this year. This is the first year it's done such a huge uh, 
flowering and held the fruit. So it has fruited uh, and held fruit for the last three years, but this is the first year it's uh, given me a big crop so far. And uh, Kwaimak is one of my favorite fruits. It's an anthocyanin filled super fruit. Here's another uh, Silas Wood Sapodilla. Look at all this fruit. I really need to take the fruit off this tree and let the tree grow because, uh, you know, this is uh, Katuk. Tons of Katuk I've, I've planted here. A sugar apple tree seedling that's, I don't even see it flowering. There's a seedling sugar apple. There's a male uh, Garcinia living stony eye. Here's these lychees I was talking about. I did not give enough compost to and they are not holding their fruit. In fact, they showed drought stress. These are mangoes here. Uh, and then they just dropped all their fruit because of the drought. I should have given them the, lots of daily compost, like three times the amount. I'm seeing that now. So live and learn, that's a learning experience. This is the drought damage I was talking about. The, the fruit just uh, didn't uh, survive. Here's another jackfruit uh, that's uh, fruiting. Uh, these yellow leaves are because of drought, but it only loses the lower leaves. It's still flowering and setting fruit. Jackfruits are extremely drought tolerant. It is nothing to worry about. This is a cashew fruit tree that produced more than 200 seeds for me last year, and I sold some of the fruit. People buy the fruit for juice. Uh, the juice is superior on it. Uh, it's not a fruit that you eat out of hand. So the, the cashew produces a nut and a fruit at the top of it, the cashew apple, and they use that for juice. And it's an excellent juice, high in magnesium, and because uh, cashew is a magnesium super accumulator. So uh, it responds well to manure inputs. And uh, they said that cashews don't produce uh, during the rainy season well, but that's the opposite of what I have found. So it does not produce during the drought season, but it produces insane amounts of fruit as soon as it starts raining. But we grow completely natural, so we don't water. So that has something to do with it. It's the complete opposite of what they tell you uh, goes on. And here's a, a Rasapote seedling. There's more cashews. There's those Valkyrie. We had like all of our Valkyrie trees have not even bloomed or flushed yet, which is weird because they're planted in different spots. These are our Miko lemons that have fruit on them, Miko lemons. And then this tree is starting to get some fruit that's holding this lychee tree. So I, the lychee trees, the birds always get all the fruit. So until they get a lot bigger, we're never probably going to get any uh, amount, significant amounts of fruit, especially since I did not give these trees uh, enough compost this year. Now I know I need to give them uh, much more compost, like twice as much. So that one has a little tiny bit of fruit. This is a sugarloaf mango. Okay, so this is cashew seedlings, cashew seedlings. I said I planted 200 seeds. They're all doing well. Here's a mango. It's hard for me to point out uh, fruit from this side with the sun coming in. So I'll look at it on the way back. Cashew seedling. Cashew seedling. This is a lemon zest tree. It's a buttercream tree. I can't even see the fruit because of the sun. I can see a little bit of fruit from here, but it's just buttercream. I can't, I can't see the fruit because the sun is shining. I'm not sure what tree this is, but I'll look at the fruit on the way back on those trees when the sun isn't looking. I mean, some of our trees froze two years ago because of drought. That's not drought because of freeze, 31 degrees. Very few, 30 out of 285 or yeah, 285 trees um, froze, but some of them froze above the graft and that's what that is. So I've re-added those to my grafted fruit trees. This one froze. I pull up pepper trees. I always pull up pepper trees. I don't like pepper trees. They're a, a, a maintenance nightmare. So that's one thing I do pull up is pepper trees when I see them. Um, so as I see the mango trees like this one, but did not hold fruit, start to bloom that were uh, froze back above the graft. So they're still grafted fruit trees. I'm adding them. So I went from 250 to 270 this year of the uh, <coughs> of the grafted uh, mango trees we have. 
This uh, tree does not look very happy, this uh, uh, little grafted uh, orange crushed jackfruit, but it's got fruit all over it, so uh, I'm sure it's going to be fine. There's my miniature zebus. Hi, girls. Mm -hmm. I love them. They're so precious and cute. So here's our fruit punch. Mango, I see that little mango fell off here. One fell off here. It's nothing to worry about. There's still a lot of fruit. This one's going to fall off. But there's a lot of fruit on this little tiny tree. Ah, deer fly got me. This is a fruit punch tree. Here's a, a cashew. See, Lane, here's a, another fruit punch tree that... This one has issues. I'm not sure what this is about. Uh, it's almost like it got glyphosate damage somehow, but uh, it's got some fruit on it, but it's got this weird uh, stuff. I don't know what that is. It's just that particular tree for the most part. This is a, another uh, fruit punch. Something's eating the fruit right off the tree already. Great. Um, maybe that's what's going on. That one has fruit all over it. This one's blooming right now. Here's those Valencia or Valkyrie mangoes that really haven't done anything yet. I imagine they're going to. I'm sure they're going to bloom. I'm positive of it. They just haven't done it yet. Here's a, a little gem mango that's completely covered in fruit. Little gem's a good mango. There's my little bull, Wally. These are the donkey pastures. We rotationally grow, graze two donkeys. I don't put my donkeys in with the cows because one of them likes to chase cows. She thinks she's a cutting horse, so I, I just, I can't have that. There's a seedling mango that I'm not sure who that is, but it's getting quite large. It smells so good here. It's so beautiful here. So lucky to um, be able to walk around here and look at things and grow tropical fruit trees naturally with minimal care and basically just managing for soil health. So here's a cotton candy mango. I can see these mangoes because I'm not in the sun now. Uh, this is one of those mangoes that froze that I re-added to our list of, of producing trees. So this is one also, which I can't, I can see fruit on it, but I can't see it from here. This is a, a larger one that did not freeze, but it has a lot of fruit on it. I can see the fruit. Um, we have these vines here that's like uh, raspberries or something, uh, some sort of native vine, and I used to hate them, but they keep the creatures out of the tree. So they turned into be a blessing uh, for us. So there, you can see the fruit on it. And it's still blooming. Uh, here's the ice cream tree that has has a lot of a little fruitlets on it. And this ice cream tree has produced three distinct crops for us. Two out of season crops and one in season crop. So three different seasons. Uh, it's a good producing tree. There's an ice cream tree that's just now blooming. Here's a huge Valencia pride tree that had a lot of fruit on it and it still does. I could see it up there. It's just hard to see at this angle. This Valencia pride tree has a lot on that side, but not on this side, but it looks, oh, it has some on this side and it's blooming now. This is a tree that uh, froze that I re-added to the list, Valencia pride, that uh, because it has a Valencia pride fruit on it uh, now. So here's those little mangoes on this Valencia pride. <clears throat> Here's a, I think this is cogshaw. I do not like cogshaw mangoes. This is a mango that froze. It's never bloomed, so it's definitely not on my list of grafted trees. This is an ice cream mango tree, and I thought it had fruit on it, but oh, it does. Little tiny fruits, little fruits. Uh, not a, oh yeah, some, not a lot, uh, but... Uh, I expect it's going to produce some more fruit. And then through all this area, with these grafted mango trees, I have just been planting seeds. And I can see some cashews popping up, like I can see one right there. 
and I could see one right there. And I have seen little achachiros in here, so I planted a bunch of direct sown achachiro seeds, direct sown mango seeds, direct sown Garcinia livingstonii, direct sown Garcinia madruno. But it could be a few years before you see any of the Garcinias, but I do see one right here, achachiro. Uh, so I know they're there. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, when they're going to show themselves. Some of them will get eaten by rabbits. There's one right here. The sun-grown achachiro can turn yellow like that, but I found it's nothing to worry about. That happens when they're small. Uh, as soon as it gets lots of moisture, the new leaves come out fine, and once they get a certain size, they don't they aren't yellow like that. I think it's a defense uh, that has to do with uh, uh, water unavailability that it shuts off its uh, uh, respiration through its leaf so the leaves start uh, leaching nutrients uh, there's a or something like that there's a cashew seedlings there's a little I think this is a mango seedling not the biggest but this is a very bad compacted spot uh, it was a horse pasture for 50 years, 55 years back here. Um, but they're, they're doing okay. Uh, these are all dry farms, so they can be a little slower, especially where the soil is compacted. So I've got to move on, get this video taken care of. Uh, I did get to mow, but you can see how dry it is here. Look at the ground, it's like brown, which is totally unusual for... Uh, Florida, but where all these weeds are growing, this mango is obviously, this is a mango that froze. It's obviously affected by the drought uh, for some reason. And I found that the mangoes that get affected, or the, that's like one out of 280 affected by drought. That's from compaction. The freeze is from compaction. So trees that were affected by freeze were is due to compacted soil because this was a lawn and a horse farm. The soil was severely compacted. I did not realize that. This is a, a uh, pickering mango. Look at all the fruit on here. Pickering's an excellent producer. Good mango, definitely worth uh, putting in your home orchard. This is a juicy peach mango, which I have not tasted. It's supposed to be really good. It's got a lot of fruit on it this year. Um, not a lot, it had more I thought, but there's enough. Looks a little drought stress. I need to uh, cut these pepper trees back. I did not pull them up in time. This is a fruit punch mango that's covered in fruit. These trees all had powdery mildew. This was a cotton candy, or is a cotton candy mango that has fruit on it. Um, but I can't see it from here I'm not gonna walk in there so I'm just gonna go up and look at the pond to see how full it is this is another donkey pasture I used to have donkey pastures here but these people decided to spray glyphosate along the fence line into the pasture into our property which in Florida is totally legal and I didn't want my donkeys eating any of the um, glyphosate so I uh, I turned it into uh, just where I plant seeds and they're not allowed to eat over here. So now it's more weeds. So the problem that they wanted to get rid of with us with weeds, uh, because they like to mow everything um, and spray everything with glyphosate, just made me double down on my weeds. So uh, here's our pond that the water level is quite low, not real low, not historically low, but it is, uh, that's pretty low, but there's plenty of feed in the pastures. As you can see, there's plenty of stuff in here. Uh, we don't, wouldn't have to give our, our livestock anything to eat um, if we uh, chose to just uh, not lock them in at night. But since I lock them in at night, I, I like to uh, give them hay to sleep on because it's a cement barn and I would have to put something in there for bedding and they like to eat stuff while they're in there so 
I use coastal Bermuda hay and that's our probiotic we use when we uh, apply our daily compost, which ends up being uh, beneficial to our, our system here. Here's a mango that for some reason does not have fruit on it. I thought it did. It has a bloom still, so I'm not sure what's going on. I need to get, uh, chop those pepper trees down. So I have seeds that I put down in here and bananas and ginger, like I've done in the front ginger. So it's, uh, it's a work in progress. It's furthest from the house. So uh, all I've done back here is pretty much plant direct sown seeds. And I'm gonna do that again this year. I'm gonna put some of those uh, Garcinia Silabica seeds back here. I'm gonna definitely do some more Achachiro and some mangoes and some Garcinia Livingstonii and some Garcinia Intermedia and some Garcinia Gardneriana, some Garcinia Brasiliensis and just direct sow them. And I found that the Garcinias usually all come up. So this is a uh, peach cobbler mango that has fruit on it. I can see it, but here we are in the sun and it doesn't have any fruit down low. Um, for some reason, uh, it didn't rebloom really down there, but this is a, a uh, fruit punch mango that has fruit on it. This is a uh, sweet tart tree that has a lot of fruit on it. Here's our, our uh, I, I need to do some more cassava. Here's a 